Hey guys, I guarantee you can increase your fuel economy by a significant amount, and I'm gonna tell you how. Some of these things you probably know, some you probably hadn't heard of before. For starters, we'll do the one that most people probably know, the tires. Make sure that you're checking your tires, they're inflated properly, check the inside of the door jam to make sure you have the correct tire pressure on the tires. Now, make sure that you change and check the tire pressure when it comes to the seasons because yes, they are going to change during the seasons and you'll need to make sure that when you fill the tires up, you do this early in the morning when it's nice and cool and you haven't drove the vehicle. Next up, make sure you keep your vehicle well tuned. Yeah, make sure your spark plugs, uh, spark plug wires or coil packs, you name it. Make sure all this is where it should be. Make sure you have your vehicle serviced properly. Make sure you use the best engine oil for your vehicle because actually today they have better engine oils than they've ever had before, especially when it comes to fuel economy. That's one of the biggest improvements with motor oils. As a regular part of the maintenance, about once every six months to once a year, you want to use a good fuel injector cleaner. Just pour it in the tank like the STP Complete Fuel System Cleaner or the STP Ultra 5M1. There's some other good fuel cleaners. Uh, STP isn't the only one. Uh, they do use a PEA in some of their cleaners. You can also use a Tecron. That's a pretty good fuel cleaner. This cleans the fuel injectors, whether you have a port or direct fuel injected uh, vehicle, and that can really go a long way. Also helping break up the carbon buildup in the combustion chamber, which can definitely uh, cause a big loss to your fuel economy. And no, it's not a miracle in a bottle, but it can make a minor difference and it's better for preventative maintenance than anything else. People always want to wait until it's at its worst, your vehicle is. Then they want to use this stuff and say, oh, it doesn't work because I expected it to do a miracle for $2. Like, I mean, let's be serious here. Yeah, sometimes it can make a big difference, but most of the time, no, it's not Mr. Fix-It in a can. Moving on to the next thing, you want to make sure that you're not allowing the vehicle to idle extended period of times common sense and eh, not so much because what i'm noticing is people doing things like they did in the past well you know my vehicle's going to sit here and idle for about five minutes and by the time i have to restart it it's going to use more fuel starting up yeah that was true in the past sure but we don't have carbureted vehicles anymore these vehicles are very uh, efficient so please if it's going to idle more than uh, two to three minutes, and honestly, a lot of vehicles can do it in one to two minutes, and it's still worth it to shut the vehicle off. Uh, the starters are made to handle this. Yeah, you don't want to cut it off while you're sitting there in the middle of the road at a red light, no doubt. Now we have the air filter. This is one of those really easy things that you can do yourself. You don't have to have someone else do it. Um, you don't have to buy a new air filter all the time and a little bit of restriction can actually cause a lot of problems when it comes to fuel economy. So you can take your uh, air filter out, you can take a vacuum cleaner or a leaf blower or something and blow or vacuum the debris that's on the filter off. This can make your filter last a lot longer. And when it comes to junk in the trunk, yeah, make sure you empty all that crap out because it's stuff like that's actually makes a big difference and it hurts you quite a bit believe it or not having all that extra crap in there that you don't really need now you want to keep some emergency supplies jumper cables and so forth but any more than uh, your spare tire and so forth yeah get that stuff out of there if it's not an absolute emergency supply please do not over inflate your tires a lot of people are trying to do this for a better gas mileage or even go to a much smaller tire. Make sure you contact the manufacturer before you do anything dumb like this because you could end up hurting someone else or yourself at the very least. So yes, some of this can increase the fuel economy, but believe it or not, uh, filling your tires up too much, it makes it harder for them to grip the road. Let's not forget about these aftermarket pieces of junk 
uh, miracle things they sell. These uh, tornadoes, um, it's like a little mini uh, turbo tornado piece of junk, a fan deal that you uh, sidewinder, you put on your intake and it's supposed to create a vortex going inside the engine, the intake, so help more air, whatever. It's just a scam. If anything, this is actually going to hurt because you're placing something in front of the intake or in line with the intake that's going to provide a restriction. And this is what's going to cause a problem with less fuel economy. There are some things that can help like cold air intake and so forth, but there's something really important that you need to realize. And that's that um, you're going to have to go through the computer and set it up so that it's actually able to work with whatever modification that you've made. And that would be the only way that you could make any kind of difference. Cruise control helps with better fuel economy, helps you focus more on the road because the less you're doing in the vehicle, the better you're able to focus on driving. Now, you don't want to do this in uh, really rainy or bad snowy conditions, but this will help you maintain the same speed, uh, not wearing your brakes out, um, or just in general working the throttle all the time. You know, keeping the engine at a good steady speed is actually the best way uh, to gain more fuel economy, along with not riding your brakes. Look ahead of you. Most people don't do this. They're in a big hurry, thinking they're saving all this time when they're really not. They're just riding their brakes all the way. I see them going around these really sharp curves and then they'll slam on their brakes. Oh, I better slow down going around this curve. Well, absolutely be safe. But actually, when you're driving around a curve, you don't want to be holding down on the brakes. That's actually a bad idea, even though it makes it seem safe because you think, oh, I'm slowing down. No, no, it's actually not safe. Always guys, I do appreciate your kindness and your comments. It really does help out a lot of people in the NIA community to learn and share with others. You know, we don't just take this uh, opinion of some random person. As a community, we come together and tell people what's best so we can see the overall numbers say, yes, do this, or no, don't do this. Thank you for watching guys. Nate's Interactive Auto.